Hey you guys, Damon D'Amico here, D'Amico Dance Company in Houston, Texas. This is Jessica Miller and she's going to help me out with what we did in last week's class. We're going to do a, a recap video of that, which was actually February the 6th. Uh, and here's what we did in the advanced class. I'll take you all the way through first. We ended up doing a right hand sugar push, three and four, five and six to this stall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll talk about that in depth. One and two and three and four and five, six, seven and eight in a way. So we played with the timing. That's pr basically what ended up making it more of an advanced class. Now this first lead is something that you're seeing a lot of people do here recently. This stall, one, two, three, and four off of this right hand sugar push. So it's very interesting. If you lead this in normal time, one, two, the lady's gonna wanna go through that or get busy. She's gonna be a little bit crazy. You know, and so what I've got to do is I've got to stall her. I want her to spin the two and the three here. So I do a one staller, two to the three. And then from there, as she started to go away, I create just a little bit of connection on the foot to make her feel like stay on that foot, stay on that foot, stay on that foot. Now, sometimes that's happening on accident when you're out there social dancing because the guys move away. So if the guy brought you in and went like this and then you were going to do some footwork, but he moves away, sometimes that makes you stay on one foot. And you ladies will start to get a good feel for whether the guy is doing that deliberately or whether that's happening by accident. If the guy is doing that on purpose, he, he's understanding that he's got to change you. There's some physics to this. So he brings you onto the foot and, he get, and he's like, go slow. And he lets you know that he wants you to do that. Now, in normal cases, that would probably just be two beats of music. So we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, because that's what would happen if we ended up doing an open break on that side instead. And we would get her to this six and we could give her a free spin or a wrap to the hip catch that we're doing in just a minute. But normally that would only take two beats. We had the ladies take liberties and take some more time and we would let the music determine whether we were gonna spend the extra time there or not. So if we went one, two, install that three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we took four beats to do that section from here instead of two beats to get to this same foot. From here, we gave her a wrap, remembering that she's already moving to her left and has her weight on this foot. So I'm gonna draw a circle around her where she stands for a triple step, taking her to this wrap. Now, normally the count on that, let's say that this is eight, she steps on eight. Normally we would go one and two, three and four, five and six. That's what would normally happen. So that's normal two beat increments where we give the lady a wrap on a triple step on the one and two, an unwrap or an open break on the three and four, and a spin into our chest on five and six. In this case, we were dancing to a piece of music where there were words that were emphasized on odd numbers. So instead of that being on the outside after the three on the and, check this out. This goes one and two, three and four. I wanted to get her to the sound on the three, to the hip catch on the three. So as I wrap her up right here, this is the eight, I wrap her up on the one and two, one and two. I'm using my fingers over here to say, whoa, horsey, and I'm connecting her here. And then I also have my forearm touching her back just slightly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull with my fingers while I push with my forearm and I'm going to get her to go and three instead of three and. So it goes and three and I get her to that foot sooner. Now, if I just do and three and then I take my time getting back to four, four and she spins in, this is still going to do a chest press on six, five and six. And that would be normal. But we wanted to emphasize what happened on the three on the odd number, which where most words are emphasized are on odd numbers we wanted to hit the three and then we wanted to hit the five so that's quite syncopated and it's kind of fast so we were working with the leaders on getting the lady to understand hey i'm not doing this randomly i want you to go faster so this ended up being one and two and three and four and five hold six seven and eight away and it was better suited to the music if we were going to hit odd numbers over odd numbers again so if i do that all the way from the top we would go one, two, three, and four, five, and six, one, float, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now one, and two, and three, and four, and five, six, seven, and eight, and moved away. It's tricky. I need you to play with it. The idea is to be nice enough, yet still get your point across. Ladies, if the gentleman is being adamant or deliberate about changing your speed, be receptive. 
Uh, there's a lot of times that I feel like that I'm asking for more speed, but the ladies are still stuck in a rut of giving the normal two beat increment cadence when I'm really trying to do something faster to emphasize something in the music. Obviously, you ladies are listening too, and so you need to decipher, is the guy doing this on purpose? Is he not doing this on purpose? What's his intention? And so you're helping him be a little bit faster. So when she arrives here on the one and two, one and two, and feels this energy in me, she already knows this isn't going to be normal. I hope she knows. So I get her, oh, that was faster. And she's like, holy crap. And then when she gets there, I'm not letting her stay. I'm not letting her stay on that three. So that's and three and four and five. So I got her to take the bait and go ahead and be quick, not only getting to the three, but also getting off of the three and then back into me. Okay. Now, when you got her over here to this stall and this went, oh, sorry, start with your one. So this goes a one, two, three, four. You ladies can triple this. One, two, three, four, five, six, triple, seven, and eight. There is nothing wrong, and that's what most everybody on the planet does until a, a follower is at the level of experience and she realizes, oh, I can do that thing that I see the pro girls doing and stay on one foot. Sometimes you can do that regardless of whether the guy's leading that well or not. You know, and so that you, you can do that. It can be a triple. In this particular case, if you guys recognize, uh, really watching this hand up here, if she goes like this, and then I give her more slack that way, she's going to want to step on that foot. Even though she wanted to swing it around on one foot, I gave her so much rope that she's like, well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and step to that foot. So the difference, one, two, three, four, is that when I get her to her right side, I now short sheet her just a little bit. I keep that short, I keep that short, I keep that short. Now, one of the things that Jessica's doing really well here, and ladies, one-footed spins, they're largely overrated, but what you can do is just leave this apart. Don't let your left leg get in front. Let it trail around. Drag some sand around. Leave it on the ground, realizing that you're rotating around on a paper plate on your right foot. So you're just turning around and stepping back through. Now, just before you get on this, and this foot needs to land on an even number. I don't care what even it is. It could be a six, it could be an eight, but this needs to be an even number. Ladies have a tendency to randomly get back to this foot on any old count because they swing it around too quick. Well, the guy goes, oh, I feel you, and he pulls you off time. Well, make sure that you're contributing to being on time when you come out of that. So as she turns around here, she's going five, six, and she's serious about getting her weight on six. You'll also notice that she picks up her foot a little bit, so she develops it, and then step through. So don't just swing it out and fall onto it forward. She's developing that leg. So she swings it around behind her. She develops it and steps through whether she uses a bunch of counts or not. Um, I'll go ahead and show the back side of this just in case it's helpful. So one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you've got the patience, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, six, seven, and eight, and one into the next pattern. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to have a lot more advanced West Coast Swing material for you guys to check out online, as well as our lower level classes as well. Thank you so much, Jessica. Appreciate you. See you next time. Hit the little button at the bottom.